Hebrews tells us this, that God in various times has spoken to His people through the prophets, but in the last days, the final time, He sent His own Son to speak to them. So that was the context of what He was, he was going to do in Jerusalem. And for centuries, the Jews, they have been waiting for a saviour that they call the Messiah. And the Messiah, according to the prophecies of Isaiah, the book of Daniel, uh, Ezekiel, and so on, you would know there are many things that the Messiah will do, but there are three main things that they are always longing and hoping for. The first thing that the Messiah will do is that he will come to establish God's kingdom. But in the Jewish mind, they were thinking of King David, how God raised him up and united the entire Israel, Israel up north and Judah, and united the kingdom and reigned as one of the greatest kings. And leading down to his son Solomon, they entered into a time of great prosperity and glory. So they were thinking of this Messiah is going to come and establish the kingdom like this. The second thing that the Messiah would do in their mind was that he would come and defeat their enemies. And in their mind, their enemies are the Gentiles. So they are longing and longing because they have been oppressed for many years. Uh, you know, they have been led into Babylon. They came back. There was a Greek empire. And then it ended up at the present time, the Roman Empire. The third thing that they were thinking in their mind was that the Messiah would come and restore the worship of Yahweh, Jehovah God, to restore back worship. But what happened in reality when Jesus came to Jerusalem was that he... He wasn't welcome as the Messiah. He was rejected by them. Him and his kingdom was rejected. And instead of defeating the enemies, he died in the hands of the enemies. He died on the Roman cross. And not only that, instead of restoring the worship in the temple to Yahweh, Jehovah God, he prophesied that the temple will be destroyed. So, <laughs> they are confused. Confused because... He claims to be the Messiah, but he's doing everything that the Messiah is, is supposed to do. He's not doing those things that he was supposed to do. In fact, he was singing things. He was saying things that's contrary to what the Messiah was supposed to do. So they say, you are a blasphemer, and they crucified him on the cross. But hey, wait a minute. If only you're willing to be patient, the mystery of God and his message, like an Apocalypse, that means being revealed, will be shown and you will be, your, your jaws will drop and you'll go, wow, how awesome and amazing this God is. Because when Jesus came, He didn't establish a physical kingdom like the way they were thinking, but He established a heavenly kingdom. That's why He says, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is called the kingdom of heaven. It is very interesting. In other words, he's saying, my kingdom is, the DNA of my kingdom doesn't originate from this earth. If my kingdom was of this earth, my people, my disciples will fight. That's what he says. So, in the earthly context, for you to become a king, you have to go to war, fight. You win, you know, over the previous kingdom, you establish your kingdom. But Jesus says, no. My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom comes. It's a kingdom of love and grace. A kingdom of forgiveness. A kingdom where He teaches them to love your enemies, to do good to them, to pray for them. It's a, it's a completely different concept. But it is an amazing thing because His kingdom is a kingdom that lasts forever. In the earthly kingdom, you think about it, sometimes the kingdom ends when the king dies. But when Jesus was raised from the dead, his kingdom knows no end because he ever lives to be king. In an earthly kingdom, there's geographical boundaries. The king of Thailand is not the king of England. It's as simple as that. But when it comes to King Jesus, his kingdom has no geographical boundaries. So whether you're in Singapore, you're in Malaysia, you're in China, you're in Taiwan, you're in America, Australia, or in Japan, you worship this same king. You call him King Jesus. All you need to do is to give God time. And time will reveal to you the mysteries of God in the mass of humanity. Instead, 
of defeating a physical enemy instead of destroying the Gentiles. Jesus, by raising up from the dead, destroyed the final enemy called death so that whoever believes in Him dies no more. That we can have the same resurrection life that He has. And that you don't have to all your lifetime be subject to bondage because of the fear of death. Because right now, in Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. Oh, come on, give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.